Hi everybody, Adam here. In this video, we are going to go over how to create percentile ranks for a scoring system. In the last video, we looked at max-min scaling for scores. And in this one, we're just going to look at percent ranks, which is slightly different. Albeit the difference is incredibly important when you're deciding how you want to score things and how you want to interpret the scores of things. We're going to do the exact same process that we did in the last video. And what I mean by that is we're going to create a percentile rank for the athlete uh, and the testing session that the athlete uh, was in compared with all the other testing sessions in the database. Then we're going to do a percentile rank for the athlete compared with his or her team. And then we're going to do a percent rank for the athlete compared to his or her team for the event in question. If you need a refresher, go to the last video or module 3.1 where we talked about max-min scaling in scores, which resulted in the scores that we see here from 0 to 100. Let's get started. The formula that we're going to use is called percent rank. Very simply, what we can do is we can go equals percent rank, open parenthesis, and we need two things. The first is we need the data to compare to, and then we need the value that we're comparing to that data. So in this case, our data is everything in column M, or our CMJ averages, comma, and the value that we're comparing to all those numbers is the value here in cell M2. And we'll close the parenthesis and click enter. And we can copy this formula and paste it down. And we'll get an error when there's no data, which maybe we should just do this now because we did in the last video, so you should understand what we're doing here. Let's add an if statement. We're going to say if the CMJ average is blank, then we'll make this cell blank. If not, then we'll do this percent rank thing. So before the percent rank, we'll go if open parenthesis M2 equals quote quote, or if it's blank, comma, what do we want to do? Then we want this cell to be quote quote or blank. And comma, if that's not true, then we'll do this percent rank thing and we'll close the parenthesis and click enter. And now we can copy this formula and paste it down. Now let's make this a percentage. That'll make it uh, between 0 and 100. The other way to do it is just like we did in the last video, is if we don't want this to be a percentage, let's undo what we just did, is we can add a 100 times or 100 asterisk before our formula. We can go 100 asterisk or times and then whatever this percent rank is and click enter. And now we can copy that formula and paste it down. And now we have scores between 0 and 100. In a little bit, when we're done with these calculations, we're going to compare these scores and we'll see what the differences are. Now let's work on the team percentile rank. The way that we do this is different. Before we use max ifs and min ifs. What we have to do here is within this percent rank formula, that we have here. So we have to add in a filter function. Let's start from scratch and do it here. We'll go equals percent rank, open parenthesis. Now for the data that we want to include to compare the value to, which is going to be the CMJ average for this person, for this event, we're going to use a filter function. So we'll go filter, open parenthesis. And the reason why we're using the full filter is because we don't want all the, we don't want to compare the value to all of the data. We want to compare the value to only the data where the team is equal to the team that that person's on. Or in other words, we just want to compare this person within their own team. So for filter, the range that we want is going to be the values for CMJ average. But we don't want all the values, comma. We want them under a condition or condition one. And condition one is when column E, or the team, is equal to whatever is in cell E2. Or in this case, for this computation, for the team that's equal to the tune squad. And we can close the parenthesis there. And let's see what's going on here, because we closed our filter function. Comma. 
And now the value that we want to compare that to is what's in cell M2, or the CMJ average for that person, and close the parentheses. So let's talk about this for a second. Okay, For percent rank, we're getting the data in column M for when the team is equal to the team of this athlete, and we're comparing whatever is in cell M2 to all of those values. So in other words, we are saying, let's look at the CMJ average value and compare it to all the other CMJ average values where the team is equal to the team that this person is on, and we'll give them a percent rank based off of that. Instead of our first formula, which just gave the person a percent rank based on all the values, regardless of team. So we can click enter. And this will give us a better idea of where this person fits within their team. Now let's add in the other stuff. Where first we go if, open parenthesis, M2, or the CMJ average, equals quote, quote, if it's blank, comma, then we'll make it quote, quote, or blank, comma, if not, then we'll do this percent rank thing. But before that, we'll do 100 asterisk, or 100 times the percent rank, so that we get a score between 0 and 100. And we can close the parenthesis at the end for the if statement, and click enter. And now we can copy that and paste it down. And ultimately, we'll go, to, we'll go to the bottom of our sheet. But what we can see here is that there are differences between these two values. Because one of them, this one, is comparing this athlete to only their team. This one is comparing their athlete to the entire database. Those are different things. And now, if we wanted to compare this athlete to not only just their team, but just their team in the testing event in question, then we can create a percent rank using the filter function again, but also include another condition. And that condition is when the event ID is equal to the event ID in this row, so that we're only comparing this athlete to their team within this event. Now, let's copy this formula and start that process. We can actually copy this entire thing that we use for the team percentile. So let's copy this whole thing paste it next door, and click Enter. And the only thing that we need to do is within this filter function here, right after this E2, we can do a comma and add a condition number two. And that condition number two, like we said, is when column I is equal to cell I2, or the event in question, and click Enter. And now we can copy this formula and we'll paste it down. Okay, so now what do we notice? Well, we notice there are a couple zeros and a couple of 100s. Just like our CMJ event and team score using the max and min values. But what I want to do here is I want to compare these two things. So I'm going to hide these because I think that this is a good, a good way to um to show an example of this stuff so let's hide everything except for these two scores that consider the team and the event look how different these two scores are yet this person's value did not change one of them there are 38.7 one of them there are 71.4 now why is that the reason is because the percentile ranks just rank them in order whereas the event uh the max min scaling considers how close the values are together. So, for example, we have this person with 27 inches, which is the highest for the Toon Squad. Now, this person only jumped 19.8 inches for the Toon Squad. Let's see what happens when it's really close to 27, because 27 is a lot higher than a lot of these other values. Let's see what happens when this is 27.1, and click Enter. Now we see the difference. 27.1 is really close to 27.2. So this max min scaling represents that. Whereas with the percent ranks, there are almost 15 points below the best score, even though they're only a 0.1 inch difference in CMJ average. So 
the reason for that is because that this is just rank number one, this is rank number two, and depending on how many people you have in your data set, um, each ranking, so the more people that you have in your data set, the less this ranking will be affected uh, when uh, per unit. However, the less people you have in your data set, which in this case we don't have that many, we just have all the people that are in the Tune Squad for this testing event, which are all of these, right? So what essentially we're doing here is we're saying the best one gets a 100, and then we're going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and divide 100 by 8, and subtract that number from 100 every time that someone ranks lower than the highest value. So what that means is that in this case, Mac Levine, they have a 27.1, and because they're ranked number 2, and there are 8 people in this data set, that uh, whatever 100 divided by 8 is, which is, I guess, around 15, is that no matter what your score is, whether it's 27.1, whether it's 26.5, whether it's uh, 26.2, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. This 85.7 is not going to change. Whereas with our maximum scaling, it'll change because it's either closer or further away from the highest value. Now I'm just going to undo a bunch of stuff. I'm just going to undo, undo what I just did because that was more just for ex explanation of the differences. And let's undo this. And I'm not even sure now that I'm thinking about it that what I said really made sense, but hopefully the illustration made sense. And that's that's all I got for this video. We just created percent ranks uh, with conditions and without conditions. And maybe these are some these are things that you'll want to use in your scoring system, or maybe not. And in the next video, we're going to go through Z-scores and do the exact same thing that we've done twice now, where we'll create a Z-score and we'll create a Z-score under these same conditions, just so that you know how to do that. And then we'll do T-scores. And then finally, we will choose our score that we want and create category scores and overall scores from whatever scoring system we decided on. And each of you are going to make your own independent decisions on what scoring system you want to use. If you end up purchasing this file, you'll get uh, all the different scoring systems that have that we've went over here. They'll all be added in, and when you get that file, you want to remove anything that you're not using because all those calculations will make the file slow. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to remove a bunch of scores is because you want your file to be robust and move fast and and be useful for you. You don't want it to be super slow and be dragged down by all these calculations that you're not using. Sorry for that tangent. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a like. And if you've been enjoying the content on this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that too. And thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.